Hello, this is Alessandrina and today I thought it would be really useful and helpful to talk about relationship harmony and what that means. So oftentimes we will experience relationship disharmony and we might feel frustrated, we might feel angry, we might feel disappointed, sad, even depressed or lost and feeling like we don't have a way to actually achieve relationship harmony. And so this process of reacting to what is perceived as disharmony can lead us to stay stuck in those negative emotions and the detrimental dynamics unfolding in the relationship and therefore to continue to sustain the disharmony in the relationship. So one of the first things to do uh, when we experience relationship disharmony is to first forgive the disharmony, to forgive the experience of life that we're having in any relationship where we experience disharmony so that we can transmute the energy of the past, the energy uh, that is bringing about the disharmony. And therefore, when we do that, we start to clear the recordings, the associations, the unresolved emotions, uh, all the ways in which we've uh, made interpretation about the disharmony or the conflict that we're experiencing. So first dissolving that, that would be your first step. And then uh, becoming aware of any uh, limiting beliefs that you may have um, essentially created, recorded, and that you may be uh, re-referencing over and over again in regards to the relationship disharmony and what it means. What it means about you, what it means about the person that you have disharmony with, what it means about the relationship, what it means about uh, the future, and what it means about relationship in general. So we can make a lot of interpretations and uh, start to create beliefs that are actually not accurate and that are not helpful, that are not what we want. So once you've done the forgiveness work and then you identify any limiting beliefs that you may have uh, created in that process of uh, experiencing disharmony in relationship, then of course uh, the next step would be to clear it. So your first step would be to clear uh, the beliefs that you've created. And once you've done that, once you've uh, cleared uh, the, the old energies, the old emotions that were influencing the disharmony, once you've identified the limiting beliefs that you may have created, the fears around um, the relationship, and then cleared them, then essentially what you've done is you've uh, cleared a lot of the, uh, the old energy that was actually generating the disharmony and that was keeping it in place. If we have limiting beliefs about disharmony, we're not actually working towards creating harmony and we're not actually working towards um, experiencing more harmony. So once you've done that work of release, of uh, transmutation, of liberation of old energies, now your opportunity is to focus positively on relationship harmony and creating that and what that would be like. So most of the time people uh, spend their time in the past, in the emotions of the past, re-referencing the disharmony, creating limiting beliefs about the disharmony, fearing the disharmony, and therefore the energy doesn't change because the energy is what I've believed, what I've experienced is real, it's true, my interpretations are real and true, and that just continues to revalidate uh, what you're experiencing. And that's true for any um, any area of your life, any uh, specific uh, subject, uh, any specific um, challenge that you may be experiencing in your life, that's always true. And that's often why uh, some of the processes that are taught uh, in the collective consciousness for healing uh, don't always work because if we don't clear the past first, then we don't have um, a way really to put enough energy, enough, enough focus on the future. So even if people are, are um, essentially 
wanting to create a new um, relationship dynamic or a new uh, way of feeling, a new way of experiencing life, if there's the weight and uh, kind of the, the holding back from the past, it's going to be very difficult to move forward. I have a, a metaphor that I often use uh, with clients where I tell them, imagine yourself running a marathon while dragging behind you 500 pounds of weight. You might not go forward uh, or you might not go very far or you might feel very uh, tired. And so realizing that the limitation and uh, the lack of energy available for creation when we don't release the past is very important. So once you've done that, uh, you can begin to contemplate what relationship harmony is. You can ask yourself the question, what is it? What would it feel like? What would it be like? Uh, and once you start doing that, now you start actually um, learning and exploring and becoming familiar, right? Meditation means become familiar with. So when we, when we are meditating, we're becoming familiar with something that is different than what our conditioning has familiarized us with, right? So our subconscious mind is 95% of what we do is essentially motivated by the subconscious mind. So once we start meditating, that 95% can start to change, it can start to, sh to shift. And when that happens, now we can invite a new experience. We can have um, essentially a new experience and explore that new experience and become familiar with it so that we can actually embody it and learn its energy and learn to be in it. So um, in that process, meditatively, if you ask yourself, what is harmony? What is relationship harmony? And what does it look like? What does it feel like? And allow yourself multidimensionally and multi, uh, at the level of all of your senses, allowing for all the senses to, to bring about that experience of harmony and you embody it. You allow yourself to feel it in your body, in your mind, in your emotions, at all levels of your system, at all levels of your chakras, of your energy system, then you will become familiar with uh, harmony and relationship harmony and what it feels like. And as a result of that, more and more energy will be um, essentially uh, directed in the direction of relationship harmony and when more and more energy is uh, directed to relationship harmony then you will <laughs> without a doubt begin to experience more relationship harmony in addition to that when you become familiar with relationship harmony the steps that are required to get there to experience relationship harmony will become obvious to you the things that you can do, that you can say, that you can release, uh, any resistance that you become aware of in your system that you can also clear, that will all become obvious to you. And when all of that becomes clear and you see what has not allowed for relationship harmony to exist and you continue to clear that and you continue to take the steps that will create, that will cultivate, that will generate more and more relationship harmony, then without a doubt you will experience more and more relationship harmony. And the more you can be patient in that process and um, realize that it might take time and that the process of time is simply a process of energetic alignment. It's you becoming aligned with what you say that you want to experience. So if in the past you've wanted relationship harmony because you were afraid of relationship disharmony, then that wouldn't help you to actually achieve relationship harmony. That would create resistance, your fear would create resistance, and you would still be in the energy of the disharmony because the fear of disharmony is the energy of the disharmony. So when you make that shift, and you really begin to embody uh, relationship harmony, you will begin to internalize and integrate that, uh, that energy, that state of beingness, that emotional uh, state, mental state, physical state, more and more and more. And as you continue to align yourself with a new energy that you may not have 
been familiar with in the past and that may feel uh, kind of like unknown and out of your uh, comfort zone. Well, as the alignment continues, you will, you will experience more and more and more of it. And that's a wonderful thing. And if you can apply that to anything in your life, then you might find that that process of alignment, which sometimes will bring up resistance and you can work through the resistance. That's another uh, core aspect of this uh, process of harmony or any other process of alignment. There will be resistance and working through the resistance is a process of alignment. And as you do that, you will experience more and more of it and, and understand more and more uh, how you can empower yourself to actually leave the experiences that you want and and, uh, and and be in a greater state of inner harmony and external harmony with others and with the world. I hope this is helpful and that it helps you heal and grow your relationships in a way that uh, you want most.